For those of you who are new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell symbol to get notified of my new video uploads. I headed down to my local dealership to check out some bikes and I have a couple of deals on the table that I want to get your feedback on. Also, I'm going to give you the status of my current bikes. Stay tuned. Let's go for a ride. You are watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. Continue to leave video suggestions, but you may find what you're looking for by visiting my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab, My Videos. And those are a bunch of playlists with all of my videos categorized in them to make it easier for you to navigate through. To be honest with you, they didn't really have anything I wanted here at this dealership. I mean, they had a lot of cool bikes, as you see here. Look, old school R6 Raven. Looking good. And look, of course, the CVI 600 double R. Hey, got some of the smaller bikes here. All great bikes, by the way. There's no such thing as a bad motorcycle. Check it out. The new Yamaha R3. That's a great bike to start on. Or for uh, even seasoned riders. Check it out. The new R6. Good looking bike, man. And I'll tell you guys, sitting on this bike, it felt really good, man. Been a, it has been a long time since I've been on a 600. And I tell you, you can tell the difference because it's a little bit lighter weight and this bike feels really good I could see myself getting this bike to be honest with you I thought I'd never go back to a 600 but hey man you never know maybe I'll have to pick up one of these R6's Yamaha MT-07 awesome bike I've heard a lot of great things but check it out the new Yamaha MT-09 looking proper with that nice triple cylinder engine and I'll tell you guys, sitting on this bike, it feels really good, man. It feels small and compact. I like that feeling. Like I told you guys, I like lightweight, sporty bikes. And this could be a bike that I might get one day, man. The only thing is, I wish they brought the SP version over here to the United States. It has a better suspension. But I don't know. For just the cruising I do and a power blast here and there, man, uh, this bike will probably do me fine. But the bike is so common, everybody and his brother has one. And there's the XSR 900, which is basically the Cafe Racer version of the MT-09. Not really feeling that look, but still an awesome bike. Hey, there's the Honda CRF450L Dual Sport Street Legal Dirt Bike. This is the first time I actually saw one in person. And I'll tell you guys, sitting on the bike makes my 2019 Yamaha YZ450 FX Supermoto feel like a mountain bike. This bike is notably heavier and feels bulkier. Doesn't feel as good as my YZ just sitting on the bike. I'm sure it's a fantastic bike and I know Honda had to put all the emissions crap and other street legal stuff on it that weighs it down. Uh, but I bet if you strip it down, mod it, I'm sure it's an awesome bike but you gotta pump a lot of money into it. In my opinion, you're better off making a dirt bike street legal. But I know you can't make a dirt bike street legal in all states. I just happen to be very lucky to live in Ohio where they don't care, where you can actually play the two-stroke here if you want to. Check it out, DRZ400, baby. AWR250R and also the KLX250. Good-looking bikes and great dual sports. Okay, now let's head over to the cruiser section. Let's see what's going on over here. All right, Indian Scout, looking good. Harley Davidson, check it out. The Harley Davidson FXDR, that looks kind of cool in person. I dig it. Check it out, Suzuki M109 R Bose. They didn't really have anything that I wanted. I was hoping they'd have a Yamaha MT10 I can sit on, but I didn't see one there. But I'll tell you this, guys, I have some great news. I have two sick deals on the table for a Kawasaki Ninja H2 that you guys voted for. First deal on the table, an ultra clean 2016 Kawasaki H2 with only 291 miles and still under factory warranty until July 2020. He said when he bought it, he purchased the 36 month extended factory warranty. He says it's 100% clean with no dings, scratches or anything, no issues with this bike whatsoever. He said that he never sped past 60 miles per hour on this bike because this was his first sport bike and it scared him to death and he's coming from vintage scooters as you can see in the background. And he says he wants to sell this to purchase a couple more vintage scooters. 
Uh, he said that I can contact the local Kawasaki dealership to verify that he had all the service done there. And also, coincidentally, my sister will be in the area soon, and she's actually going to inspect the bike for me. It's going to cost me about $600 to ship the bike. The only issue I have with this deal is that some people are saying they had some transmission issues with the 2016 H2, and it can cost up to $6,000 to repair it. But this is still under warranty, and actually, I can still purchase another year uh on the extended warranty so this could be a great deal but here's another deal that's pretty sick as well the next bike is located at a dealership out of state so the purchase transaction is going to be a lot easier and safer compared to the previous bike that i mentioned which is being sold through a private seller all the way across the country however this is a like brand new 2019 h2 with just 36 miles on the clock and they say 100 percent clean no scratches dings dents anything and get this, it comes with a set of Rotobox carbon fiber wheels valued at over $3,000 and a Vandermint carbon fiber tip full exhaust valued at over $2,500 and they're giving the OEM wheels with this bike as well. So that's over $5,000 in mods on this bike. So what do you think this bike, they're charging for it? $28,000. Is that a sick deal or what? If I were to buy this 2019 H2 brand new, which I can't, you have to pre-order it the previous year, and there's no brand new H2s anywhere in this country, it would run me $29,000 plus fees, which would run probably about $30,000, and that's full stock with nothing extra. This bike's got over $5,000 in sick mods. I mean, this bike is ready to go now. So... But I have a few questions to ask about this bike. First off, why would somebody go through the trouble ordering this bike, pay all that money, put and then put over $5,000 in mods on this bike and only do 36 miles and then sell it? And they didn't even do a simple fender eliminator kit, but yet they had the sickest mods on the bike. That makes zero sense to me, which a sales guy couldn't answer. But this could be a really sick deal. But what I'm going to do which I advise you guys to do in my how to buy a used motorcycle video, which I'll include a video link in the description and comment section of this video, is I'm going to have them take it to a Kawasaki dealer and have their mechanic do a full inspection, which I'll pay for, to make sure, first off, the fairings are clean, and also check the engine. I want to know what's going on. Is there a power commander? Was it flashed? Is it, will it still be covered under warranty, which the warranty goes till April 2020? Um, I am going to get an extended warranty if I do get this bike for at least a year. Uh, I plan on keeping this bike for at least a year, whether I like it or not, and share their full experience with you guys. Uh, but what I love about the 2019 is that it has better mapping than the older bikes. They, they completely improved the mapping. They also improved the electronics. Uh, it has upgraded Brembo Stylema brakes, which are the absolute best right now that you can get. It's got the self-healing paint, which I think is a gimmick in my opinion, because uh, I'll talk about that later. But And you can also pair your smartphone with the bike. Some of you may think $20,000 is a whole lot of money, but me spending $20,000 on a 2016 that could potentially have transmission issues that could run up to $6,000... And also that bike doesn't have any of these upgrades, nor does it have all the upgraded electronics and better suspension like the 2019 has. So that $8,000 difference, you know, that could end up not meaning very much. So I feel like this could be the better deal. By the way, yes, I can afford this bike. And no, I'm not taking a loan out on it. I'm paying for it in full 100% cash. As some of you guys know, I believe in living a debt-free lifestyle. I preach that in older videos. I don't owe one single dime of debt, house, cars, motorcycles, all 100% paid for. I'm not rich, but I work hard and save for what I want, and I live well below my means. And also, I'm selling three bikes, which I've already sold the CBR, and the WR is already spoken for, and the Tuano is pretty much spoken for. So those three bikes net 27000 so only adding a couple, what, a grand to it gets this bike. So there you go. But anyways, which bike should I get? Leave a comment below and make sure to subscribe to my all-in-one motorcycle channel. And for those of you guys who want to get any of my gear, you know, like my airbag vest that I have, it's awesome, keep you safe out here. Uh, my carbon fiber super ultra lightweight helmet with mirror shield, uh, my leather jackets, leather pants, uh, glove C armor jacket, uh, 
all of my gear. I always include links in the description and comment section of my videos or go to my website at psychocruiser.com and click on the menu tab, My Gear. Hit thumbs up. Check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto.